Hello everyone, I am the Desert Gardener. And before I start my series of growing tomatoes and peppers in the desert, I wanted to do another one of my garden MythBuster videos. Those seem to be fun and informative. So what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna be talking about this. This is Blossom End Rot. Now, if you've ever been a part of any online forums, you probably know what I'm gonna talk about next. And that is pretty much every day, someone will post a picture of this and say, oh my God, what's happening to my tomatoes or what's happening to my pe peppers? And about a dozen people will chime in and say, it's Blossom End Rot. And then they'll begin listing things to do about it. Now they list a lot of different things, but the main four always seem to be uh, add calcium, eggshells, Epsom salts, or a product called CalMag Plus. Now, do any of these things actually fix or prevent blossom end rot? Well, to know for sure, we have to look a little closer at what blossom end rot is and what causes it. Now, the technical term for it is abiotic stress. Now, what that means is that something has happened to the plant that's caused it to go into stress. So the plant stops moving water, calcium, and other nutrients to its fruit. The idea is that if it can keep those nutrients in the main body of the plant, it's more likely to survive whatever it is that's happening to it. So from a survival standpoint, it's really a good idea. It's sacrificing the fruit that it has now in order to try and stay alive past whatever's causing it stress. And it knows that it can just simply produce more fruit later. So what are some of the causes of blossom end rot? Well, the five main ones are drought, excessive heat, salinity in the soil, wounding, and pathogens. So let's take a look at our four myths and see if that'll help at all. Now, the first one is calcium. Now, you can add calcium to your soil in a number of different ways. You can buy uh, calcium carbonate. Uh, there are a lot of products like uh, garden gypsum that are really high in calcium, and a lot of fertilizers that have calcium in it too. So, will adding calcium fix blossom end rot? Well, no, because blossom end rot is not caused by a calcium deficiency. This happens because there's a lack of calcium movement. There's a difference. So the plant is just simply not moving calcium to the fruit. There may be plenty of calcium in the soil. That's not the issue. So adding calcium simply isn't going to help. So I understand where this came from though. Somebody years ago looked at a fruit like this and noticed that there was a lack of calcium in it. So they went, oh, ipso facto, it must be a calcium deficiency, but it's not. Years later, we discovered that it's simply a lack of calcium movement. It's the abiotic stress caused by something else that is causing the blossom end rot. So adding calcium isn't going to help. The good news is it won't hurt anything either, as calcium is one of those things that you really can't add too much of. The plant is only gonna absorb what it needs. Unlike say nitrogen, if you give it too much, the plant could drop its leaves, which is bad. So this myth is busted. So what's the next one? And that's eggshells. Now, it's, it's pretty much a rehashing of the, the same myth. I know I did a whole video on eggshells a while back, so I'll link to it down below if you wanna see that. But the general idea is eggshells are calcium carbonate, putting them into the soil is supposed to help the plants get more calcium. Problem is it doesn't really work that way because it needs to be broken down first and that takes anywhere from uh, three months to a year. So if you're trying to treat a deficiency, doing it with eggshells is sort of pointless since the plants won't be able to absorb it for almost a year. And again, calcium isn't going to help anyway. So this myth is totally busted. So the next one, is Epsom salts. Now, Epsom salts is a little perplexing because I'm not 100% sure why people are even recommending it. I've broken it down to uh, three possibilities. Uh, the first one 
is a lot of people seem to be under the mistaken impression that Epsom salts is high in calcium. It's not. And we've already discussed calcium wouldn't help anyway. The next one is people just seem to recommend Epsom salts for anything, regardless of what's going on. Your plant isn't fruiting, give it Epsom salts. You got bugs, give it Epsom salts. It's yellowing, give it Epsom salts. They seem to think it's some sort of magic bullet that will cure everything. Unfortunately, it's really not. Um, I'll probably do a whole video on that uh, here soon. Not that there's anything wrong with Epsom salts. If your soil is deficient in magnesium, it's a great inexpensive way to add magnesium. But other than that, there really aren't a lot of uh, other uses for it. The science just isn't behind it. Now, the, let's look at all the ingredients in it. Now, it's 2% calcium, 10% magnesium, and 14% sulfur. So we already discussed calcium isn't going to help. So what about the magnesium? Now, magnesium helps the plant absorb nitrogen and phosphorus. Well, unfortunately, blossom end rot isn't caused by a deficiency in nitrogen, phosphorus, or magnesium. So that's not going to help. The sulfur. Now, sulfur is what the plant uses to create chlorophyll. Now, again, blossom end rot isn't caused by a deficiency in chlorophyll or sulfur. So adding that's not going to help either. So nothing here is going to help. So Epsom salts is busted. And to make matters worse here, um, using too much Epsom salts can actually cause problems or make things worse later. I'll explain. The, uh, the first one has to do with magnesium. Although it can be helpful because it allows the plant to absorb nitrogen and phosphorus, it can block a plant's ability to absorb calcium and boron. So overuse of Epsom salts can actually cause deficiencies later on. So you really need to be uh, sparing with Epsom salts. Magnesium is important, but plants don't need very much of it at all, and most garden soils are not deficient in it. The other problem is salinity. So when we talk about salts, it's important to note that I'm not talking about table salts. That's sodium chloride. Um, Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate. So it's clearly different. However, it does have the chemical makeup that puts it into the category of salts. So it is a, it is a type of salt. And the problem here is if you're using a lot of it, and your soil isn't draining very well, those salts begin to build up after a while. And remember, one of the causes of abiotic stress and blossom end rot is salinity. So overuse of Epsom salts can actually cause blossom end rot, not fix it. So totally busted. So the last one is a product called CalMag Plus. Now, unfortunately, we're just beating the uh, calcium dead horse here. Uh, people think it's a calcium issue. They see calcium in the title of the product. They think that's going to help. Now, uh, CalMag Plus is 3% calcium, 2% magnesium, 0.1% iron, and a lot of uh, micronutrients and stuff. Unfortunately, there is nothing there that is going to help blossom and rot in any way. So unfortunately, all four of our myths are busted. So what will fix or at very least prevent blossom end rot? So let's let's look at our causes again. The first one is drought. That's simple. Nothing more than watering is going to fix this issue. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. The plant was drying out. It needed water. Watering is simply what's going to fix this. Now, how do you prevent it? Uh, even consistent watering, especially with tomatoes. They really like an even consistent watering. You may want to consider a drip line or something. Um, also, 
one of those uh, moisture devices where you stick into the ground. They're pretty good at uh, judging uh, moisture and light. Terrible at pH balance, but pretty good at uh, judging moisture. Um, you may also want to uh, increase the amount and frequency of your watering when the temperature gets hot because you get uh, more evaporation, of course. And if you're using containers, you want to make sure that your potting soil isn't draining too quickly. A lot of cheap potting soils are just simply uh, ground hardwood. You've got to make sure that there's uh, a lot of peat moss and things that will hold the moisture in there. And that's it for drought. The next one is extreme heat. Now you can't control the weather, but there are some things you can do. For example, I have a 60% shade cloth over my, all my tomato plants. This will uh, shade them from the sun, help keep them cool. And if you're using containers, you can just simply pick them up and move them into the shade. I have my containers with my peppers in them uh, put in a place where they get about four hours of morning sun and then they're in the shade the rest of the day here in the desert. They just wouldn't be able to handle full sun all day. Uh, you'll also want to remove weeds around your tomato plants and trim the leaves on the bottom levels. This provides more airflow. Um, you may also want to uh, oh, plant them farther apart. This also helps with the airflow, especially with the tomatoes. They should be at least two feet apart. And don't plant anywhere near a windbreak. So for example, the wind in my area always seems to come from the west. So I wouldn't want to plant anything right on the east side of a structure. This will block the wind, raise the temperature. You need that good airflow. Uh, misting. Um, every day after work, if it's over 90, I miss the plants. Now, I don't use a little hand thing and just go, you know, squirt, squirt, squirt. I have an attachment for my hose and it has a misting uh, attachment and I give it a really good misting. It really cools things off. Also, if you have uh, plastic containers, avoid black plastic containers. They attract heat and uh, hold it in there. I definitely recommend the felt containers. They breathe and keep things cooler. So the next one is salinity. Now there are three main causes to salinity. The first one is obvious. Maybe you live near the ocean. The uh, soil near the ocean it usually has a higher salt content. So you may need to consider raised beds or containers. The next one is overuse of fertilizers. A lot of fertilizers have a lot of salts. So if you're using a lot of them, and especially if your soil doesn't drain well, those can build up over time, especially Epsom salts. And then there's uh, oh, minerals. When you, when you water your garden, what's supposed to happen is the water will, of course, seep down into the soil, seep down to where the roots are, and then seep past and drain away. That's what's supposed to happen. But if you have a lot of clay in your soil and the things aren't draining well, um, the water will start to pool, either on the surface or even below the surface where you can't see. And what happens is when the sun gets warm, the water begins to evaporate. The problem with that is the minerals that are in the water, the calcium, the salts, and other things, will get left behind. And over years of that happening, those salts will start to build up and cause issues. Um, there are lots of things you can do about it. Uh, soil conditioners like uh, lime and gypsum will help break up the, uh, the clay. Then you want to add a lot of organic materials like uh, compost, potting soil, and maybe some perlite. This will help it drain better and uh, help relieve the problem of salinity. The next one is wounding. Now this one's pretty obvious, something physical happened to the plant. Maybe it was stepped on or an animal chewed on it, something like that. Now you should definitely cut off any damaged parts. Uh, maybe give the plant some extra uh, nitrogen. This will help it uh, um, create new growth, new uh, stems, new, new leaves to replace the ones that were damaged. And you might consider you know, put a, putting a fence around the area keep uh, pets and kids away from it. 
And the last one is pathogens. Now this usually is caused by poor draining soil again. Uh, the water is sitting near the roots. The, that causes root rot, that causes pathogens, that causes abiotic stress, that causes blossom end rot. So same thing, just make sure your soil is draining well. If you're in containers, uh, make sure you're adding perlite to your potting soil. Make sure that you're not using those um, cheap plastic containers that have very small drainage holes on the bottom and the, the little cups that don't really hold a lot of water. Again, the felt pots are much better. They allow the water to drain out and the water won't sit there and cause problems for the roots. That's everything. Now I do recommend that you cut off any fruit that looks like this. This is not going to get any better. You can eat it if you like, just cut off the funky part. Um, it's not going to hurt you. I do recommend uh, giving the plant some extra phosphorus. This will help encourage some flowering and fruiting to replace the, uh, the fruit that uh, has gone bad. And that's everything. Now I do, I want to admit that making this video was probably one of the main reasons why I created this channel. It was so frustrating hearing people constantly recommending calcium when I knew it didn't help. Uh, the myth just seems to be perpetuating the more people talk about it online. So I'm hoping getting the word out. I'm going to put some links down below to some articles as well as some science data. You can link people to that. That'll help them out or link to this video if you like. Doesn't really matter. I'm not looking for credit. I just think it's important that we stamp out these myths when they're there. We keep an open mind. We uh, we're willing to accept new data when new information and new science comes along. This helps us grow as a community. So I hope, uh, I hope it's helpful. And if there's a myth you'd like me to talk about, put it in the comments down below. And if you want to be part of my series of growing tomatoes and peppers in the desert, uh, subscribe and hit the little bell so you can follow along in real time. And I'll see you in the next one.